If I was up here talking with you 200 years ago, 90 out of 100 people in this room would be living on farms or working in agriculture. We fast forward to today, and only about one out of 100 of you are involved in agriculture. This has resulted in a massive loss of human intelligence on farms. It's not that the farmers were more intelligent in the 1800s, it's just that we had a lot more eyes on the ground seeing and doing. Farmers were able to make management decisions at very fine scales. Hand weeding was common, even on large-scale field crop production, where farmers could focus efforts onto weedier parts of the field. This loss in human capacity in modern agriculture has come at a unique time when food security is under great threat. For example, we have to increase food production by at least 60% to feed a growing population and do this in the face of numerous destabilizing factors, such as declining soil health, increasing water scarcity, and pests becoming resistant to our existing pesticides. Not to be grim, but our soils are a finite resource, and we are currently eroding tens of billions of tons of it into our ocean each year. Nitrogen is the most limiting nutrient on farms, and we lose half of it each year through leaching to groundwater and other losses. Climate change brings its own challenges to food security, bringing increased floods, droughts, and more extreme weather. Right now, agriculture is unsustainable. Let me repeat myself. Right now, agriculture is unsustainable. We already have an intrinsically leaky system to manage using finite resources such as nutrients, soil, and water. We need to create greater efficiencies and super localized within field management solutions. We refer to this as site specific management. It is my belief that the best pathway to achieve this precision and sustainability on farm is through greater autonomy and robotic systems in agriculture. I hear all the time that people are worried about robots stealing jobs and pushing farmers out of the industry. But folks, that exodus has already happened. Remember what I said earlier, since the Industrial Revolution, we have shifted from 90% of the population living on farms to just 1%. The massive loss of human intelligence, you know, remember, fewer people with eyes on the ground, seeing and doing, has been replaced by large-scale machinery that homogenized and simplified all management across a field. As farms got bigger and more industrialized with fewer farmers, they became far less nimble and less able to implement that site-specific management. Today's farmers feed 155 people compared to the three to five families in the early 1800s. Fortunately, the digital agriculture revolution is bringing the many eyes, and as a result, intelligence, back to the farmers through much needed low-cost sensing technology and robots. Crucial advances in computer science and artificial intelligence are beginning to revolutionize agriculture. It's bringing unprecedented granularity and precision to farming. We now have the ability to manage at the individual plant level, an advancement that presents a truly unique opportunity to increase the precision and sustainability of our food systems. And as we move towards greater autonomy with robots, Farmers are no longer going to have to live by that old mantra of get big or get out to stay profitable. The future will be, are you a one robot farm or are you a 20 robot farm? Our aim with robotics in agriculture is to help farmers make increasingly complex decisions, improve their quality of life, and empower them to use more sustainable farming strategies. Site-specific management will allow farmers to do more and grow more with lower input costs and less environmental impact. For example, farmers typically broadcast pesticides, fertilizers, and irrigation water across an entire 400-acre field. Placing cameras on tractors or robots during field operations enables us to use facial recognition for plants and pests and only apply pesticides, fertilizers, and water exactly where they are needed. So they don't leave the field and they don't end up in our water supplies. However, folks, 
Robust robotic equipment that meets the demands of our agricultural needs is not here yet. Fully autonomous robotic systems are about five to 15 years out from broad scale use. The robots are limited by the lack of training data needed to develop computer vision and AI models for seeing and doing. It's really the essential ingredient for them to learn and perform their duties. Training data is the cornerstone to building more autonomy on the farm. Think of training data as the information that is required by machines to do facial recognition for plants, insects, and animals. The human eye is constantly integrating massive amounts of knowledge and experience from the past to inform the present when we are looking and differentiating an object. You learn what looks round or what is hot and what tastes good. Computers need that same training from images they need tens of thousands of images that are annotated with exactly what is in the picture. This data has to train for whether an image contains a plant or an animal, and what's the species in that image. Even more images are required if the organism is under stress. And can we detect what kind of stress? Is it nutrients, disease, or damage from an insect? And what is the actual pest doing that damage? We must have extensive training data for all of these factors, and we must be able to do it under varying sunlight conditions, weather, soil, and crop management. Just like our driverless cars, farm robots are constantly interacting with very complex environments and need to be able to steer correctly through the field, and ideally be able to even swarm to parts of a field to address an area that is a critical need. To enable this level of robotic autonomy on farms, we must make the millions of annotated images that we're using for training data open access. The training data needs to be available to anyone who wants to use these labeled images to train computer vision models. Whether it's a small startup tech company, mature enterprise, or public scientists and farmer operators. Currently, these types of high quality image repositories exist behind the walls of large private companies. For example, think back to when you logged into a secure website and you had to choose which image had a stop sign in it. This is computer vision training. It's the same thing I'm talking about here. As a result, advancements in robotics and precision agriculture is primarily only available to the largest farms who can afford their initial high price tags of hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. The price needs to be in the tens of thousands. By making all of this training data open access, we will enable early research and development efforts to move faster and meet the needs of our farmers sooner. This is important since there is an urgency with climate change. So how can we build these public access repositories of training data and overcome this bottleneck? It's my opinion that highly coordinated government and university scientists are really best positioned to meet the challenge of de-risking this robotic development pipeline. We need to take a feather out of the cap of other agencies like NASA and NOAA who have already made satellite imagery and weather data open access. These resources are revolutionizing land management across the globe, and there is not an analog for computer vision in agriculture. Public sector scientists are the boots and eyes on the ground, directly connected to the enormous diversity of farming systems and environments, and are perfectly positioned to collect the huge amounts of training data that is needed. But to do this, we need to energize the scientific community. We need to move away from our data silos and lean into fully contributing to this public good, getting public sector scientists to work together. How do we do this? through creation of highly coordinated, curated image repositories where we set standards on both the data and the community of practice. We are on the precipice of a digital revolution in agriculture, and I truly believe we have a great opportunity to reinvent the way that we farm, to meet both the demands of a growing population while also regenerating our farms and surrounding environments. Together we can return to the power of many eyes, informing our farmer decision making. The eyes are now in the form of cameras and sensors, and while farmer intelligence may be augmented by artificial intelligence, 
Farmers are ultimately still the decision makers, but they will be able to return back to these site-specific management practices of the past with all these new eyes in the form of cameras. The result will be farmers able to manage the growing complexity of scaling up our food production to feed the world while also preserving and protecting the environment.